Welcome to the MSU Inside Out. I'm Kyle Patterson. And I'm Amy Olson. Well, we have a lot of stuff coming up in today's show. We have some news about the vice presidential debates coming up tonight. Um, we have my interview with Melanie Moore and Dana Flayton. And we also have Halloween at the, talking about Halloween in the Dome. And we have Shane with sports and his UFC preview show. And we also have Derek Kaka with weather. And we also have your interview. Yes, I'm going to be talking with Dr. Gerard about his experience doing the semester at sea. But before we get to all that, Piper, I heard that um, some students recently had the opportunity to hear local candidates speak about the upcoming election. You know, it's great when candidates involve students on a local level. I'm sure we were all there present to be at this open forum this past Tuesday, but if not, fortunately, Arwan Vidal was there to tell us all about it. So here's the package. Let's take a look at it. Debates are in the air on a national scale. Candidates for U.S. President met on the stage last week, and tonight at 9 p.m., vice presidential candidates will work their words. The political atmosphere is heating up on the local level. MSU was a stop on the campaign trail this Tuesday, and Juan Vidal has more on the story. With elections just around the corner, the Sociology Club has invited some city and local candidates to Allshire Theater for an open forum. The goal is to help students make informed decisions this upcoming election. The Sociology Club organized the political town hall meeting where students would be able to meet the candidates and ask them questions about issues that they're concerned about. It's always good to have an informal or informed decision to when it comes time for election. Thirteen candidates showed up and they were all able to introduce themselves, give a statement, and field questions from the audience. It was not a debate, but things did get heated during hot-button issues, such as pathways to success, the allocation of funds, infrastructure, and the future of our students. Well, the biggest issue is when we look at uh, the state treasurer, of course, is the amount of money that the state of North Dakota is going to be receiving, um, you know, not just from the oil monies uh, through extraction taxes, but also through our sales tax, our income tax, um, you know, North Dakota is on an upward trajectory uh, for its economic future. How long that future lasts will be you know, up to you know, whatever happens within the oil field. As election day approaches, the best thing we can do as voters is to stay informed about the issues as well as the candidates. And this forum gave students and faculty the opportunity to do so. This is Juan Vidal for KMSU Inside Out. And the 2012 election date is Tuesday, November 6th. Now, higher education starts at the K-12 through level. Candidate for Superintendent of Public Instruction, Kirsten Baszler, says that's among her top three goals if elected. Baszler's three-point plan, unveiled in August, includes getting money back into rapidly growing school districts and reducing the number of remedial classes students will need to take in college, which in turn will reduce costs. The third goal of Baszler's plan is a push for high school students to take more advanced placement and dual credit classes. She says that if elected, she would like to see a 25% or 25% rather of this year's high school freshmen have at least 15 college credit hours before they even start college. The new three-tier system proposed by North Dakota University System Chancellor Hamid Shervi, uh, Shervani rather, would complicate the third goal of Basler's plan. The NDUS three-tier plan recommends that all dual credit courses be the principal responsibility of the community colleges. Basler says that if elected, communication between herself and superintendent uh, in the university chancellor will be key. NDUS approved the three-tier system late September. Now, the Arab Spring, or Arab Revolution, is a revolutionary wave of demonstrations and protests. These began in the Arab world in December of 2010 and stretch into, president, into present date throughout Africa and the Middle East. The protests are primarily in the form of civil resistance. Also taking place are strikes, demonstrations, marches, rallies, and have often been the resulted in violence. The people want to bring down the regime has been the primary slogan of demonstrators. Many Arab Spring demonstrations have met violent responses from authorities. The MSU Foreign Language Department's International Film Series continues with Inside the 
the Arab Spring. MSU's Arabic Fulbright teaching assistant from Egypt, Islam Farang, showed current documentaries and led a campus-wide discussion about the Arab Spring, the series of events that have led to increased interest in how democracy and stability can take root in the Middle East. And in a couple of weeks here, your host, Kyle, will be um, hosting her own senior project mm -hmm. in the MSU International Series. I'm sure that you have it marked on your calendar. You'll be in attendance. It's ready. It's circled and highlighted and everything on my calendar. Great. That makes two of us. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Piper. Well, I'm here today. Um, well, Halloween is less than two weeks away already, and that means kids um, dressing up in costumes and also getting lots of candy for Halloween. Um, but with Halloween comes also safety, and there's no place safer than Halloween at the Dome. I'm here today with um, Melina Moore from the Optimist Club of Minot, and also Dana Flatten of the MSU Student Council for Exceptional Children. Thanks for joining me here today. Thank you for Thanks having us. us. So first question off the bat right away is, um, what is the Optimist Club then? The Optimist Club of Minot serves the youth in the community. Uh, we have various projects with the community Halloween party at the Dome being our biggest project. Uh, we have also had two different youth classic, golf, golf classic tournaments, mm -hmm. and those have gone over very well. We are involved with the uh, community safety, the summer safety fair, and we, we help youth in the community. We, we sponsor them on different things, and our, our biggest project is, is the Halloween party. Okay, and then I guess what is the MSU Student Council for Exceptional Children then? Um, it's our special ed club here on campus, and we um, work a lot with the kids with special needs, disabilities, and everything, and we work real closely with the Optimist Club for this Halloween at the Dome. Okay, now speaking of Halloween Dome, let's get that. It's 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Halloween. Um, this is already the 30th annual, right? Correct. Okay, and um, what has made it successful from year to year? From year to year, I think probably the thing that has made it the most successful is the MSU student organizations because without them, we wouldn't have that many sponsors. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are here today to encourage more people in the community to help sponsor the event, either in the traditional sense by uh, having a booth and ha handing out treats or whatever they want to hand out on the evening of Halloween. Mm -hmm. If they can't do that, they could become a monetary sponsor okay. and um, help us with some of the expenses. Okay, and you want to promote safety in the community, and by doing Halloween at the Dome, it gives parents another option instead of going house to house. How has the attendance been from year to year? It varies. It okay. varies a lot. Sometimes when we think there's going to be a lot of people, like last year, mm -hmm. with you know much of the city had been flooded, we thought for sure we'd have over 1,500, yep. and there was just under 1,000 children okay. that came in. Uh, we, d we don't count the, the adults that accompany them, Okay. but we, we count the children by, by giving them a ticket as they come through the door. Okay, and then um, what does uh, MSU Student um, Council of Exceptional Children get involved? How do they get involved with this? Um, it depends upon the year. Sometimes we do booth as well as um, a lot of crowd control. We kind of help people get to where they need to be going or um, helping them get in. We also take candy to the different booths so that everyone has enough candy to give to the kids. Okay. And how many sponsors are there exa exactly for them? We're still working on the sponsors. Last okay. year we had 30 different booths and we had about 15 monetary sponsors. All right, anything else to add about Halloween at the Dome? Uh, we just encourage everyone to bring their kids. Uh, if you're willing to help out by being a monetary sponsor, you can contact myself or Mary Mercer at Minot State. All right, thank you for joining me here today. Okay, thanks, thank That's you. That's Dana and Melina here for, for Halloween at the Dome coming up on Halloween. Coming up on the second half of MSU Inside Out, we have some um, interview with Zach Demiers for, from Marcus. We have an interview with Dr. John Gerard and also sports with Shane and weather with Derek Hackett. <laughs> 